Hello everybody and welcome to the most anticipated video of the Pennsylvania Woods Vivarium's YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking specifically about the updates involving the animals themselves and a little bit about the enclosures that they live in. We could see Wellsboro, who happens to be the golden toad. Two really important things when you think of Wellsboro are his sheer size compared to the other American toads. He stands out as one of the largest I've ever seen in captivity or in the wild. Not to mention his golden coloration, which makes him stand out specifically compared to any other toad I've ever seen in the wild or in captivity. Here we have a good shot at seeing Wellsboro shedding. I gave them one of the greatest feasts that any American toad could have, allowing them to have almost like a buffet style meal. One of the most important things for an amphibian is whenever they shed, because they eat the shed and it also gives them nutrients. This is one of the most important things that they'll do in captivity and it's a clear sign that they're usually healthy and that they're growing. I know a lot of people that want to try to help their toads whenever they see them struggle to get their shed off, but realistically, if I were to go in and help Wellsboro right now, it would be more of a problem for him because I could potentially rip the skin. Sometimes it's best to just sit back and allow the toads to do their thing. Next we get a chance to see one of the most important parts of the video, Ace, my female American toad who's also shedding from the same feast that Wellsboro and her mate, Pius, who you'll meet coming up, took part in. Ace is so unique because she loves to go to the water and to just enjoy herself whether it's soaking or swimming. Ace is actually the center of this video because what happened to her impacted the whole entire ecosystem of the Pennsylvania woods as we know it. There was one night that I came home and I saw Ace was just suffering. She seemed like she was having a seizure and this led me to not panic, place her in some water and take her to the vet. The toads lived with the gray tree frogs inside the western Pennsylvania woods. This was the problem on October 5th. Whenever I took Ace to the vet, the doctor believed it to be only a calcium deficiency and said it would have been a severe case and Ace was not going to make it the next day. However, I believe from what I had seen Ace doing, Ace was twitching and she became very stiff at times. I thought more of her being poisoned and she was reacting to the toxins inside of her than it was a calcium deficiency because there's nobody else except me that truly knows how much supplements I use and I knew that this wouldn't be the case. Whenever I got her home I put her in a little quarantine container and put a UVB light on top of her and this actually helped to save her life because it helped her to absorb the nutrients of the UVB light and the water that was continuously put in that was fresh had helped her to flush out the toxin. Ace struggled a lot at first with catching prey she was so disoriented and she was off balance things changed very quickly and as soon as I put her in guess what she did Ace went right to the water and she had some fun soaking one of the next days that Ace was back inside her home she actually climbed the top of the enclosure which is about 18 inches and she hid in a secluded part of the enclosure and here I wanted to try to coax her into eating her favorite meal thankfully Ending her hunger strike, we got the opportunity in slow motion to see Ace consume a wax worm, which was one of the happiest signs for me. Now, the question became, what was I going to do with the gray tree frogs? I mean, they became a household pet, they became a notorious part of our family, and even here, you have a chance to see me feeding Christian, who is the smaller gray tree frog, some wax worms that Ace wasn't eating. I really had an opportunity to either get rid of them, keep them, or put them out in the wild. However, it was October. I knew that they weren't going to have the opportunity to prepare for hibernation like they needed, so I wound up deciding to keep the eastern gray tree frogs. And these guys have so much energy. Christian here is one of the most enthusiastic frogs that I've ever kept. This is one of my favorite parts of the entire video, just sitting back and watching Christian take wax worms from me and just being so calm and relaxed about it. I came up with the 30 gallon new Pennsylvania Woods Vivarium. I was not accustomed to working with 
such a small enclosure compared to the 125 gallon and the 75 gallon. I wanted to try different plants to see if they would work and I also wanted to make sure that this was friendly and proactive for the gray tree frogs. So I decided to put a very high plant, being a hydrange plant, and an accessory you could see Christian on here in the background. Here we get a chance to see Bane. He wasn't very active whenever I first put them inside the enclosure. He really enjoyed the pink flowers for whatever reason, and he just had so much fun at night. I can remember him specifically making calling noises, and he was just continuously hunting for prey. Because the way that this enclosure is different, I actually release the crickets all at one time and allow them to hunt two times a week. They have access to as many crickets as they can catch. I think I stocked the enclosure with about 50 crickets for two great tree frogs, so you can imagine how happy these guys are. Here we get a chance to see Christian who happens to be hunting on the ground. Usually gray tree frogs do not do something like this. It's uncharacteristic from what I believe and hear about other keepers' experiences with their frogs. For Christian to be able to catch these banded crickets or whatever feeder he's hunting on the ground, it gives him the opportunity to compete with Bane. As I said, Bane is larger and he's much stronger than Christian, so he would overpower Christian at hunting time whenever they would be catching crickets. If it's not at the top part of the enclosure, Bane has no way of coming down towards it because he just seems like he is more nervous about coming to the ground and to him it seems like it's not worth it. So this gives Christian a head up, at least in terms of being able to adapt and consume prey. Here I thought it would be really cool to just show you really fast a clip of one of the banded crickets who decided to venture into the water bin of the gray tree frogs and explore the new English ivy that I gave them all. Banded crickets seem to be a much better type of feeder because they don't drown as fast, they don't smell, and they seem like they live a lot longer than what the other crickets do. This is the 125 gallon Western Pennsylvania Woods Vivarium. And this to me is my favorite enclosure. And I'm not biased to the animals, but I'm just very excited that this is the enclosure where I, all my ideas originate from. Here we get a chance to see a feast with European house crickets for Ace, Wellsboro, and Pius. Ace is continuing to show a little bit of her disorientation from the seizure. She still is having a little bit of a hard time catching crickets. I actually missed catching the footage of Ace consuming her first cricket. I was very disappointed the camera didn't pick it up, but also very happy that she finally caught something and it was very nutritious and it was a big cricket for her. However, Wellsboro seemed to be having a hard time trying to catch prey. I believe this to be because this is his first winter without hibernation. Usually, toads are already hibernating around this time frame. So for Wellsboro not to be catching prey, seeming a little bit more slow and lazy, only makes sense because this is the time of year where toads are sleeping. While Wellsboro and Ace were both trying to catch crickets, but seemingly having a hard time, there was another toad inside this enclosure, and he was having a much easier time catching them than what Wellsboro and Ace were. I'm talking of course about Pius. Here he is right now. Just watch how he grabs this cricket. He is such a strong little American toad. It's just so great watching him. Pius is one of the strongest toads and he seems to be very unique for male American toads. The reason why Pius is so unique is because he has been growing around the same rate as a female American toad and if you know anything about toads. The females get much larger than the males. These toads, Ace and Pius, are well over two years old. For the simple fact of Pius being such a beast and growing at such an alarming rate, it has me very hopeful that when Ace and Pius are able to hibernate, that they'll produce such strong and really unique offspring. I had a very important learning lesson that almost cost me Ace's life. This is not something that I'm going to take lightly. And I can say from first-hand experience of being successful with keeping lizards and leopard frogs with American toads, 
I'm going to take some time this winter and I'm going to make sure that I make the best decision whether I keep other amphibians in with the toads or not. This negative experience of keeping two different amphibians together and almost costing Ace her life really had me taking some time and putting in to perspective of what I actually wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that I had safety for the animals first and I also wanted to make sure that whoever was living together was being able to cohabitate peacefully and it would be healthy. So it leads me to the question, will I or won't I? Will I have a 125 gallon mixed species enclosure for you in the spring? Or will I just focus on a 125 gallon Pennsylvania woods with the toads specifically? I'll leave you with that question, will I or won't I? As the toads are settling in over the winter and they're going to be relaxing and allowing me to perform updates to their enclosure, I'm going to be featuring my exotic animals for the most part in the winter videos. The five line dumpy family, meaning my white's tree frogs and southeastern five line skinks are going to be the faces of the page until around the springtime whenever I've made my decision and everything begins again with the Pennsylvania Woods vivariums. Be sure to watch out for small updates on the gray tree frogs, however, like their new and upcoming video facing off against the White's tree frogs in the first ever Thanksgiving battle between the tree frogs. I hope that you enjoyed this video, it was informative to you, and please get in the conversation on the forums, follow us on YouTube and Facebook, and be sure to continue to watch out and please like and subscribe for more content. Thank you all very much.